We've been building up all this machinery in terms of logarithms and exponential functions. Let's try to actually put it to use solving some interesting problems. And the first one of these has to do with something we call exponential growth. The basic formula is that some kind of a population is equal to the starting population times e to a constant times time. That constant k is called a growth constant. And typically when we're doing a problem, the first goal is to figure out what that k is. Then once what we know what the growth constant is, we can use it to figure out other things. Let's take a look at a problem here. So in 1990, the population of Sierra Vista was about 33,346. By 2012, the population of Sierra Vista had grown up to 46,466. Assuming this thing follows an exponential growth, we want to estimate the population of Sierra Vista in the year 2100. So like I said, we've got the formula, p equals p0 e to the kt. And before we can really do much with this, we've got to figure out what k is. Well, what do we know in this thing? We know after some time has passed, in 2012, the population was 46,466. The farthest back we go, 1990, we'll call that our starting population of 33,346. E is Euler's number. We don't know what K is, but what do we put in for the time? Well, this we've got is in 2012, but we don't want to put in 2012. We want to put in how much time has elapsed. So from 1990 to 2012, that was 22 years. In terms of the time for this formula, it honestly can be any units whatsoever, as long as you're consistent throughout it. If you're talking about bacterial growth, for example, hours or maybe even minutes might be appropriate. Whereas if we're talking about people, years probably makes the most sense. It all depends on what you're finding the population of, what the time unit should be. But as long as you use the same one throughout the problem, it's going to work exactly the same. So now that we've plugged in those numbers, how do I figure out what that k is? Well, we've got a simple exponential equation now. We can go ahead, we can divide both sides by 33,000. 346. Then I've got just a base to a power, and it's an e. So if I take the ln of both sides, over here, when I take the ln of e to a power, I'm just left with the power. So divide by that k. I'm sorry, divide by 22, and we've got our k. So, plugging that into a calculator, k comes out to be approximately 0 0.015081. Now, you notice that I kept a lot of decimal places on that k value, and you want to do that. Just by the nature of how exponential growth works, because this is being multiplied by a large number of years, a little bit of round off error in k can make a pretty big difference in your final result. In fact, what I like to do is just take the whole k value from the calculator and use the whole thing. Okay, well now that I've got that k, how do I estimate the population of Sierra Vista in 2100? Well, I use the same exact formula. I've got P equals P0 e to the kt. And what do we know? My original population was still 33,346. 
I've got E, K, we just figured out, and what's my T? Well, we were going from 1990 was where we started, so 2100 is 110 years later. Once again, you've got to go ahead and to go to all in the calculator here. And again, I went ahead and I used the entire thing in my calculator, all the decimal points. So your answer, you might get something slightly different if you're using this rounded off value. But I get 175,186.831. Now let's think about that number for a second. This is supposed to be a number of people. We can't really have 0 0.831 people. So we'd go ahead and just round that thing off. And say 175,187. Now, honestly, this kind of estimation is never going to be accurate down to the nearest person. If I were doing this for you know, someone asked me how many people are going to be in Sierra Vista in the year 2100 using this data, I'd probably say about 175,000. We're not going to know it's exactly 187 people more than that. Now, is this number realistic? Well, it all depends. And if we were in person, we'd probably discuss that a little bit. Typically, what happens, though, is that a population will follow exponential growth for a while and then sort of drift away from it. It's just really hard to know when it starts drifting away from it. Honestly, if we actually look at Sierra Vista, the population has been leveling off the last few years or in fact even going down a little bit. So this thing is definitely kind of unrealistic right now. But a few years ago, it actually looked like we might be hitting this kind of a target number. Another kind of problem which uses this exponential growth is radioactive decay. I don't have time to totally discuss how radioactive decay works, 